steps to eternity. Now let's examine this paradise on earth in the first six verses of Revelation 20. We already read verses one through three. Look at verse four. And I saw a throne and they that sat on them and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded uh, for their witness to Jesus. This is the Revelation 6, verses 9 through 11. Do you remember the martyrs, the fifth seal, that group? The souls of those uh, who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus. These are tribulation martyrs. These are saints. Uh, the ones that are led to Christ by the 144,000, the ones that are led to Christ by the two witnesses, the ones that are led to Christ through the gospel angel that we covered in chapter 14. All of those that the Antichrist kills are there who had worshipped uh, for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, this is Revelation 20 verse 4, and had not received his mark on their forehead or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So tribulation martyrs are going to live and reign with Christ. Now, this harkens back to what Jesus said to his disciples. He said to them, they're not in the tribulation, they're 2000 years ago living on earth. And he said to them, you're going to join me and be ruling and reigning during the thousand years. So basically, during this time, of the millennium, we, as well as the martyrs who have died and have gone into the presence of the Lord in heaven, we are going to get to come down to earth, kind of like angels visited Abraham or angels visited, you know, uh, Samson's parents or angels, you know, came down at various times uh, during Christ's ministry and comforted him. They weren't living on earth. They were from heaven and they came down to earth and they kind of came and went. They would just disappear and come back and be everywhere. That's what we're going to be like. Wow. But especially what is profiling is look at these martyrs living and reigning for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead, now look at this, the rest of the dead are still here in Sheol or Hades. They were not. Uh, do not live again till the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. What is that? Well, that's the promise that all the redeemed of all time that have ever come to know Christ, those that were before the cross went to this place, Luke 23, 43. Remember how Jesus said to the thief on the cross, remember there was a thief right here next to him? And in Luke 23, as Jesus was dying on the cross, in Luke 23, 43, Jesus turned to that thief and what did he say? Today, you're gonna to be with me in paradise. Now, this is fascinating the sequence, and we're going to cover it in just a couple minutes, of where did Jesus go after the cross before his ascension? And we'll cover that, and it will tie together the dead that are on the earth. But the armies of the nations have been disbanded from the tribulation warfare. All the militaries are fallen into ruin. All the machinery of war has been smelted down and converted into implements of peace. Do you remember what it says in Isaiah? that you will take, you will forge your swords into plowshares, remember in the lion and the lamb and we'll be beside each other. That's what's happening. All the nations of the earth are coming to worship God in Jerusalem. Prosperity is evident from pole to pole. Poverty is unknown. Everyone has all that their heart can desire. There are no prisons. Can you imagine a world during the millennium, during this time, a world where there are no prisons, there are no hospitals, uh, there is no such thing as, as a place for the aged and infirm, because basically if we understand what Isaiah says, Isaiah says that people will not die during the millennium. Everyone that enters the millennium will live the entire thousand years, unless, Isaiah 65 tells us, that they fight against and rebel before this final rebellion. So if you're a solo rebeller, 
and won't do what God says, he cuts you off. And you'll be considered a child if you're cut off at 100 years old because everyone's going to live the whole thousand years. It's just really amazing to think the wolf and the lamb, the calf and the lion, the cow and the bear, the child and the scorpion, all are at peace. Jesus has come. The millennium is here. The golden age so frequently heralded by the prophets of Israel. Remember I told you 20% of the Old Testament prophecies are about this time period. All that heralded by the prophets of Israel's past has dawned at last. The earth is filled, Isaiah says, with the knowledge of God. Jesus is Lord. He rules, Psalm 2, the nations with a rod of iron. His reign is righteous and all the nations obey. Wow. By the way, what, what do you do in the millennium? Oh, it's in, so interesting. If I was teaching the book of Isaiah, I just finished it, did it in Korea a few months back. We talked about this millennial time. Do you know what Isaiah says? It says everybody on earth has their own farm. So the whole earth will have all these farms, your, your little allotment of land. Everyone gets a section of this no weed, no pests, no spiders, no snakes. You understand? Everybody gets this perfect farm, no thorns, no pollution. And, and everyone lives, and it says they sit under their vines. So you have this, this kind of jungle-like, everybody's going to be kind of like on Hawaii, you know, living in this, this beautiful climate. But once, well, actually three times, but, but once each season, every spring, every summer, every fall, do you see what these are? These are the feasts of God. The feasts of God are the Old Testament holidays. Guess what happens during the millennium? Not only does the temple return, so does the holiday schedule of Israel. Remember I said Israel is the center of the world. So each season, three times a year, everyone is asked to come from all over the world and go through this temple. Just to show you something, I don't want to get too far off, but Jesus Christ was crucified on Passover. He was buried on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and he rose from the dead on the holiday of first fruits. This is one weekend. This is Passover, crucifixion, buried during the time of Unleavened Bread, arisen at the launch, which was a Sunday of first fruits. And then 50 days from Passover, from right here to right here, from Passover to Pentecost is 50 days. Jesus stayed for 40 days after his resurrection. 40 days. He told the disciples to tarry for 10 more days in Jerusalem. And the day of Pentecost came. Now, guess what? These feasts are written down in Exodus and Leviticus. Old Testament with Moses. Jesus, God chose that he be crucified on Passover, buried on unleavened bread. Third feast, he rose again. The fourth feast, the church was born. There are three Jewish festivals left. Most likely, the trumpets will be what we call the rapture and the start of the tribulation. The Day of Atonement will be the, the horrors of the tribulation. And the Feast of Tabernacles will be, and, and of course, culminated by the Second Coming. And then the Feast of Tabernacles will probably be the Millennium. And so what the Lord does is, throughout the whole thousand years, he invites everybody to come to a spring gathering, and when they come to this temple, what do I call it? It's God's visitor center. You ever wonder what you're going to be doing during the millennium? Well, I know what I'm going to probably be doing. Have you been to anything like the Ark exhibit, you know, Answers in Genesis? You know how they have all those nice people around that explain the exhibits for all the people that aren't Christians or don't understand them? Did you know the saints are going to be here? We're going to be 
explaining to the whole world about Christ coming and dying and the church and that, that he came uh, at the second coming and the day of atonement. And right now they're in these little farms and all that. What happens if people don't come? Isaiah tells us that too. If you're from this farm right there and it's the spring feast and you don't come, do you know what the Bible says in Isaiah? It says, no rain will fall on your farm. What God says is, if you won't cooperate, I'm going to give you a warning. If you continue to not cooperate, you're gone. I mean, it's amazing. That's what it means in Psalm 2. In Psalm 2, it says he rules with a rod. Jesus from Jerusalem rules with a rod of iron. So that's what's going on on earth.